As you're shopping or researching for a pair of workout headphones or earbuds, how about this for a purchase idea, guys? And I'm gonna throw this in a ring and see if you wanna add this to your checklist. A earbud that looks like a shocks unit, but without the whole bone conduction part, you know, because some people find the vibration against the skull thing kind of ticklish or annoying. And also, how about this idea on top of that? What if the same earbud is also made for helmet wearers, like cyclists or skateboarders? And I'll get to that more in a second. But if you identify with any of these categories, or if you just want a straight up good open air workout earbud, then you might wanna check out the Laval LTS 21. And this company started out live as a smart helmet maker, but now they decided to add this workout earbud to its lineup. So does it succeed? Well, I tested this for about a week and here is what I found. So let's get to it. <laughs> This LTS21 version that you see right here will retail for $150 and that in and of itself is a really good price because don't forget something like say the Open Run Pro by Shox goes for the same. Uh, but if you hit up Indiegogo right now, this entire set is $90 early bird price. I'll link it down below in case you're interested. There's Bluetooth 5.2 on board with support for AAC and SBC. No aptX here, guys. And in terms of battery life, I've been able to get 10 hours easy out of these things even though they're rated for 12 hours and that's at 65% volume. Uh, the long battery life also lends to a heavier weight per earbud, that's like 10 grams, but it's very easily spread out because of this really cool uh, headband. It really uh, alleviates that weight problem. Water resistance or dust, water dust resistance is IP64, so you can take this for workouts, but not in the shower or swimming. As far as I can tell, there are a couple of packages that you can get with the LTS21. There's the sport model, which is basically just the earbud and the detachable neckband or headband as well as the carry case for the earbud. If you move up to the Pro though, you get a whole bunch of accessories meant for bike riders, and I'll show you that in a second, as well as I think right now for limited time only a larger carry case to carry all of these things. Now, the build quality of the earbud and the case themselves, spot on guys, really a lot of effort or, and thought were put into this. Uh, pretty much self-healing plastics here, if you scratch it, you can rub it off and it goes away for the most part, as long as it's not a too deep of a score, like right here, this was like scratched against some metal, and it stay put. Uh, grease magnet, easy to wipe though. Inside they're shiny plastics, that's where you store the earbuds obviously. And the lid is really nice too. No creaking, no nothing. Everything is really tight. Uh, impre I'm impressed with this. USB-C charging port, no wireless charging. There is the reset button. Now the earbud itself is also the same quality, same grippiness, really nice to hold. Um, touch surface is right here, accepts double, triple tap as well as hold. Uh, there are two mics per side, one at the top side and one towards the front here. And the speaker ports, now this is not bone conduction. This is a 16 millimeter driver in here doing all the grunt work, uh, porting sound out of this little grill right there. And here is the base port right there. Now the headband itself is preformed. It's not bendable. I wish this was like formable around your ears uh, to really customize it, your fit, but it fits at least on my ears or my, over my head really darn well. So they've thought about this, maybe this is truly one size fits all. Now in terms of the Pro version, there are a couple of accessories that help adapt the LTS21 to a bike helmet because some bike helmets will get in the way of this kind of headband, especially if you're a street bike rider with that kind of helmet that if you're craning your neck a lot, this will get in the way. So what Laval has done, let me try to pop this off real quick. It has a really good positive uh, lock right there, so that's a good thing, it's not coming off unless you're really forced to. This is the le left armband or headband. And let me try to focus on this. And this will go around your helmet. And let me attach this little bracket right here. This bracket will stick directly onto your helmet. And I'll show you some B-roll in a second of how this looks like, if I can get this on properly. I like the look of this, especially in this color. It comes also in white, if I'm not mistaken, or some kind of cream. Another accessory that Laval did provide me is called the BR80 Remote Controller. And this is sold separately from the Pro and the Sports model, but it's really cool. It's called the Bling. Honestly, there's nothing bling about it. But what you do with this, this is really darn cool, guys. You attach this to your bicycle handlebar and it will pair with your LTS21 and you can control your media and also your voice assistant and such and also can control the camera. This runs on a button battery, so there's the added cost of replacing that. I wish this was rechargeable, you know, by USB-C or something. But this attaches to your bike handlebar and you can control things that way. And if you have a Laval helmet with one of those smart features, this controls like um, your headlights and your signal, signal indicators because you know you can do left and right. 
uh, left right indicator and their helmets will respond likewise so that's pretty darn cool So what am I listening to right now? Aaron Charles doing Pressure. I love this song, you should check it out guys. We're outside doing the Bluetooth range test, pardon the harsh sunlight. It's, yeah, it's a bright day, but look how green it is. It's awesome, isn't it? So we're gonna try to handle the uh, exposure stuff. I'll try to dodge in and out of shadows, but remember this Laval has a Bluetooth 5.2, so it should last around 30, 33 feet specs wise, but in the real world with my Pixel 6 over there at the end of the deck and where I'm standing is around 25. It should ideally stay around uh, 40 feet till we start hearing any kind of signal uh, issues. How y'all doing? Thank you for joining me today. Yep, right on cue. I'm standing around 41, 42 feet and it just cut out right there. So that's good. I'm gonna keep walking just for fun until we get a disconnect, uh, complete the signal loss. I wanna see how far this goes. Probably around 50 something, 50, 55, 60 feet away. And don't forget, it's through a house, so that's not bad at all. Still going strong? Am I I'm almost by the street here? Uh, I think there's nothing playing, but I didn't get any tone. So, yeah, so notice that if you're looking for any kind of dropout tones, it doesn't say anything. Uh, I'm going to keep walking and see if it does, once I'm back in range, if it does anything. Ooh, that's harsh. Let's run into the shadow here. I just got a signal drop completely on the left side. Oh, now it's back again. Uh, you know, just for fun, we're doing this. And we're back in range. And it says connected. And media plays. Yeah, that's nice. The media continues, so that's good. Anyways, you can see the fit of these around my head or on my ears. I know it's a weird concept. These are, for me at least, anyway, technically headphones because they're sitting on my head, not over my ears or anything, or in my ears. They're just right outside on the temple. Um, they're very comfortable, but a little bit on the wobbly side when you're, let me try running on these. Yeah, they shift a little bit on the ear, but not, not bad at all. It's, it's just a minor encumbrance, but no big deal. So run faster. Yeah, nothing. These things are as stable as a rock, so perfect for working out as what these are designed for. Let's do another round. What's up? Now, in terms of fit, the other thing I wanna quickly talk about is the mount for the helmet that Laval provides in the Pro version. Uh, they say or recommend that they, these this one is for you know mounting on your helmets if you need to listen to your tunes properly, for it to sit properly in your ear. Uh, I've had, I've tested these or tried to mount these in a proper comfortable position on a regular bicycle helmet and also say a mountain biking, BMXing or climbing helmet like this one and I have a few others that I tested it with. None of them, I can tell you what, none of them uh, hit the headband at all. All of them sit so high up because you know that's a safety helmet for you. They sit high up enough like this, it never gets in the way. The only time it does ob obstruct itself is the uh, the chin strap right here. And this is true for all the helmets, even the balls. So um, even with this arm, you still have the earbud sitting against the ear or the, your head. So the straps are going to get in the way no matter what. So my point is, if you're planning to buy, if you're interested in the LTS 21, get the sports model because you never know if these are going to are gonna fit. I've tried all kinds of version, all kinds of orientations and ways. It's just not as, you know, perfect or ideal as the neck band itself. So yeah, take it, take it for what it is. If you want to experiment and get one of these, go for it. But I personally think uh, you don't need it. So yeah, I think this was made specifically for Laval hel helmets. I wish they had sent me one so I can properly test it. Uh, but as it is right now, it doesn't fit any of my helmets or my head. Maybe I just have a small head or something. Okay, now that we've talked about the fit, let's uh, move down to the road right here to get some sound samples and see how these things handle noise suppression uh, during phone calls. Right now there's a car right here, another one coming down. You can hear it, that this is like a snake, isn't it? It's like if this is every time some is trying to noise suppress, here comes a couple more trucks. How's that sound? There you go, I'm gonna keep talking again. Yeah, I'm not a fan of these. When it's quiet, it's perfectly fine, but the moment you introduce any kind of, uh, you know, noise into the picture, oh boy, these things kind of, yeah, I'm sorry to say, they need work. So, 
there you have it. That's a sample wind noise reduction. Uh, there's none existent right here. They get into the mics really easily. Uh, let me, it's windy right now. Let me try running. Yeah, you can hear for yourselves uh, how, whether it picks it up or how it is. But, you know, noise suppression, not so hot when it's quiet right now. I'm away from the road. My voice quality is good. Not bad, right? Uh, but yeah, if you're using these but in a noisy environment, just forget about it. Now, between this and say the Shox Open Run Pro, the LTS21 projects, at least to my ears, a fuller, cleaner, clearer sound, especially in the vocal department. It doesn't have the warmth of the Shox, I'd say, but the 21 balances it out with mellow bass and then tops it with much punchier mids and highs, which some of you may prefer. Now, the Laval doesn't tout itself as a bone conduction device like a Shox, and I have to say that both of these segments have their inherent strengths and weaknesses. That's another topic altogether. But what this is and has, as we saw earlier, is a really large 16 mil driver on each side, pumping sound just right outside your ear canal. And if anything, the amount of power this has allows it to outperform the shocks outdoors. You don't have to crank these up to max while walking, say, on a noisy street. I was surprised by this next one, but the headband, guys, it fits much better in most scenarios than even the shocks. Yes, shocking. And it doesn't bump into things like your shirt collar or your hoodie or your back for that matter whenever you crane your neck outwards doing yoga or burpees or riding your bike. And as you can see, even though the audio units are large in of themselves, the headband makes up all the difference in ensuring a balanced and secure and comfortable fit. I personally think that the LTS21 Sport version is sufficient for most activities as well as buyers. But if you are a bike rider or a helmet wearer with a helmet that does get in the way of the headband, then the Pro version's helmet accessory really can save the day. And I really like that there is that option. And the fact is, even if you get or have to go to Pro, the price, the retail price is still much lower than a pair of Shox Open Run Pro. It's not often that I shower any kind of praise on touch controls, but guess what? The Laval's works quickly and reliably. And thanks in part to the sweet spot that is relatively large right here in the middle. It's really hard for your fingers to miss it. And it also helps that each double or triple tap doesn't feel like you're hammering something deeper into your ear. Because you know how I feel about that kind of violation. One of my biggest question marks about this kind of setup and this unit itself is the longevity of the slot rails, where your earbuds connect uh, to your headband and also your helmet band. How long are they going to last and what happens if they fail? And really you don't need for it to break, all you need is some kind of kink or bend in the corner of the plastics here and this will be really impossible or hard to install. So what is Laval's plan for in terms of warranty and customer service and also selling after warranty is over, selling replacement bands in your store? We're already midway through 2022 in case you haven't noticed, and yet I'm still sitting here wondering why I have to turn the left and right side on separately. Yes, I know. Plus, it's also all too easy to accidentally power one of these modules on. If you're holding it in your palm with the touch controls facing down, you're gonna turn it on. Or if you're trying to attach it back onto the headband, like seven out of 10 times, I'm accidentally powering it on. And I'm also not done yet. To power this off, if you decide to keep this on your headband or your helmet, the only way to power it off is to unclip the modules and then place them back in the case. That's not very practical, is it? So what are my final thoughts? Well, I think the LTS21 is ideal for those of you looking for a pair of workout earbuds with the ultimate kind of transparency mode, the natural kind, you know, like nothing piped through the mics, nothing artificial, just you, your tunes, and the outside world. It's really awesome. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised by how well these perform compared to the more expensive Shox Open Run Pro, for example. Basically, they're just different approaches to the same problem with different results. So at the end of the day, it's just down to you. Do you want bone conduction or not? And really, I have to say, I really enjoyed using these uh, as open air listening devices, like the SQ and the Power, they are some of the highlights. But on the other hand, the mic and the durability of the accessories are question marks for me. So with all that said though, I'm giving the Laval LTS21 a gear up score of eight out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below.
Well, I am calling it a day, guys. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching this. You could have spent your time doing something else, but you're here checking this out. So I appreciate y'all. If you like what I do, show your support. Subscribe to this channel. Get me to 25, 50K. That'll be super awesome. Share this with your friends. Thumbs up if you like this video. Comment nicely down below. Visit my Patreon page if you'd like to be an awesome Patreon member. And also remember to do something kind and loving for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. Peace out.